Hello again and welcome to another edition of Sudson Country. Hi, I'm Herb Sudson. Welcome to the show, my friends. We're here in Morris County, New Jersey at Forster Field Living Historical Farm, where in a few minutes we'll take you for a walk around the farm, take you on a tour, and you can see exactly what farm life was back in the turn of the century. Becky, you're with me. You're going to explain to us what Forster Field Living Historical Farm really is. Foster Fields is about 200 acres. It was the first living historical farm designated in 1973 in New Jersey. And what we do here is we uh, demonstrate the kinds of agricultural practices about the turn of the century, 1900, that was done by Charles Foster, who lived here, and his daughter Carolyn. Now, Carolyn lived here until she died in 1979 at the age of 102 years old. So what we're doing is, is showing school children, visitors, the kind of activities that the Fosters and their servants and their workers engaged in from about 1880 to the 1930s. It's a lot of fun. Pretty interesting. We took a walk around a few minutes ago, and we're going to take you on a tour now. Becky, we're standing here watching what over our shoulder? We're watching our new idea manure spreader being, um, the manure is being spread by our two draft horses, Jack and Calvin. And our farmers, Dawn and Juan, are uh, uh, taking out the morning's manure, putting it on the field so that we can fertilize it for the corn and the potatoes that we're going to be planting a little bit later this spring if the deer and the geese don't eat it. You have to watch out for that. Now, this is, this is a daily operation, what goes on? Absolutely. This is part of it. What we're hoping to do next week is actually plant the corn using a horse-drawn corn planter with one of our draft horses. That goes pretty quickly. And it takes one horse to pull the corn planter? Just about, because it's a small one. Yeah. This manure uh, spreader is big, so it requires at least one team of horses. Very interesting. And you all winter long, we're here at the spring of the year, but all winter you cover these fields with the horse manure. Exactly. Well, you're seeing in a, a manure spreading uh, demonstration here in Sudson Country. It's the first for Sudson Country. All right, we're here with Joya right now, and she's going to show us a demonstration of what, Joy? Well, I'm going to show you some corn shelling and then corn cracking. The type of corn here is grown for our farm animals. It isn't anything that you would want to eat, I'm sure. It's hard as a rock, as you can see. It was grown last year, and then it was picked in the fall and put into the corn cribs that you see right over there that have the open slat work on the side, permitting the air to pass through so the corn wouldn't rot, get moldy. So this is the way the animals like it. Now, we have three huge pigs on the farm. They eat it exactly like this, corn on the cob. But all the other animals, especially those little chickens that you noticed, like to have it not only off the cob, but cracked into little pieces. Now, years ago, when the early settlers came to our country, the Indians showed them how to grow corn. The settlers grabbed the first thing they could find to knock the kernels off, namely shells. They settled, of course, pilgrims up in uh, Massachusetts. So they started calling it shelling corn, and the name stuck. So that hundreds of years later, when this machine was invented, it was still called a corn sheller, okay. even though there are no longer, of course, any shells on it. So I'll work this for you, and you'll see just how it's done. Now, this was made about 1900. I'll leave this here. There's a hole at this end, and I'm going to drop this ear in here. Okay. Inside, there is a gear that's going to move the ear of corn along in that direction. A metal plate with sharp points on it is going to remove the kernels, if it still works after 100 years. Shall we try it? I think we should try it, Joya. Okay. No electricity. Manual here. That's right. Oh, you have the, oh, you have the crank have over the there. handle on this side. Electricity did not come to this farm until the 1930s. So, in it goes. Wow. Now, That's it, huh? One kernel was left on, as you can see. That was pretty close. This was the job of the children. On a Saturday such as today, they would have been doing this practically all day or after yeah. school. Very now, interesting. The whole idea then is to prepare the feed for the farm animals. Okay. Now, they ended up with a 
large amount of cobs. Nothing was thrown out on the farm. The men could make corn cob pipes. You would take a whole box of cobs, perhaps on a very rainy day, put them down in the barnyard to help soak up some of that excess water. Otherwise, you'd sink in up to your ankles when you walked across your barnyard. They would use cobs also to start the fires in the wood or coal burning stoves in the kitchen. In other words, kindling. There's a considerable surface area that you can see here. So that would ignite and help to start your fires. But those are the very practical reasons. Now, the children had their own ideas of what to do with the corn cobs. And you can see that up here. After all their chores were done, they might take a couple of goose feathers. And you see how many geese we have on the property. They're all over. They would poke a hole at the blunt end, put in a few feathers like this, and have themselves a game of darts. They I'll be might, darn. They might set up an old wagon wheel and put numbers all around the rim of the wheel to score points. So wherever the dart went through the space between the spokes, they scored their points. This Would is you the like beginning of the game of darts? Right. Would you like me to just experiment a bit? Leo, can we, can we get that? Throw it. I'll happen. send it out that direction because there are no people walking around there. So here we go. That was, that was pretty cool, the way that the, the feathers went around. That's the whole idea, and it didn't cost a cent. So they didn't go to the store and spend money on toys and games, not when you can make your own. All right. Tell you what, we're going we're gonna to show you. We're going to get to the cracking now. What am I doing? This is the corn cracker. You're cracking it so that it's in suitable pieces to feed to the farm animals now. The what animals ate this cracked corn? Other, why don't they just eat the shelled corn? The pieces are too large when they're in whole form. This is not cornmeal, though. No. Now, if you did want cornmeal, you would use the same type of corn, but you would bring it up to a grist mill. Okay. Have it ground on big millstones. But you're cracking it in small enough pieces so that the farm animals can now digest it. They couldn't digest the whole kernels. I just, I just cracked the whole ear of corn. That's right. Congratulations. That's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty first cool. First time for me to crack. I shelled, but I never cracked. You did a great job. Look at that. And the chickens, if they could talk, would thank They'd you. They'd thank me for this one, huh? That's right. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, a I'm a drumstick. I'm a drumstick type of guy. <laughs> that's going to be their supper tonight. <laughs> All right. You just saw me uh, cracking that's some corn here. Help us to get them into the chicken house there you at go. the end of the day. <laughs> I'm this glad I was a help. Them to come in because they know this is put on their floor. It's called scratch. Okay. You oh, scratch around scratch. for All it. Right. Interesting. Chris is here, and Chris, what's your job at Forrester Fields Living Historical Farm here? Well, I'm an historical uh, program specialist, and I help interpret for visitors. Okay, and you, what are you interpreting behind us and beside us and over here? What's the this, interpretation? This is the Foster's um, carriage house, and in the late 1890s, this was used for the Republican caucus. And uh, we have visitors come here, look at the carriages, and they were also able to do a little chores, cleaning the harnesses, polishing the neck pieces here. And you're going to, uh, who's going who's gonna to do this? Am I going to do this or are you going to do it? Well, the, the visitors. The visitors do it. There you go, of course. All right, so what do I have to do with this? I have to take this. I have to get this rag and and take to get the soap. Show me show us how to do it and I'll just okay. I'll pick you up. This these are the these are the collars. Stand behind the table. Okay. These are the, these are collars, right? Yep. And you these are real collars that the horse are using today? Yes, this one's a mule one. This okay. one would be a horse. And you would take the lanolin, okay. the saddle soap, and you would put it on. And then just like polishing your car, you have to buff. Make it nice and shiny. Lots of work. So the coachman would have had to do this to keep all the harness work and everything and, nice and clean and shiny. And being a coachman, I'm going to try it. It says here, coachman. Now, we'll explain what the tags are briefly. Um, when you come to Foster Fields, you get a choice of three people, either Andrew Gibbons, the coachman, or Margaret Cahill, um, the farm wife, and, and Robert Lyons who would crack corn. Okay. So you're the coachman, Andrew Gibbons. All right, well, I, was, <laughs> I was just cracking corn, so I'm the other guy too, but uh, let me try this. Hold on to the, my microphone. Okay. Now, 
this is the lanolin, and mm -hmm. I have to, I have to do this. Mm -hmm. This is what they did in the 1800s, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, right up until cars came into an existence. Yep. Well, okay. we portray about you know 1890, 1900 right. here. Right. And that shines it up, and it keeps, and it keeps it soft and supple, preserves yep. the leather. Yep. Pretty interesting. This is a first. This was a first for me. I never do, do, did anything with horses here. I mean, as far as riding, driving horses. All right. Thank you very much, Chris. I appreciate it.